when in sports in specific, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in patterns of being in a, seam of sa a sea of sameness and doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. But uh, when we embarked on this search, it was really important for us to see if we could do something a little bit different. And um, quickly in our conversations with JJ, it was very evident um, that he had a unique perspective and philosophy on basketball and how it's to be taught. Interesting. Okay, Rachel, your response to what Rob Polinka launched this media session with. Yeah, I mean, look, I actually think Rob did a great job in this press conference. I don't always say that. I think JJ did a fantastic job in this yeah. pre press conference because, no shocker, the guy with yeah. the communications what background won the press conference. Mm -hmm. If he didn't do well yesterday, yeah. that would have been a problem. As for the different stuff, I'm not sure that's the right word because when you look at the Lakers' past five head coaches, let's say, Darvin Ham, Frank Vogel, Luke Walton, Byron Scott, Mike D'Antoni. Those guys are all very different from each other. That's not a sea of sameness by any, any stretch. And by the way, there are lots of ways to do something different. If you're the Lakers in their coaching situation, you could, I don't know, keep a coach for more than three years. That's, a, that's that. a different approach also. <laughs> yeah. I think the word he used a little later was more accurate. He said modernize. And I think that is right. what he actually means, and I think that is what the Lakers need. Because, Modernize how? Well, so yeah. they haven't really had a coach that has embraced mm -hmm. analytics uh -huh. the way J.J. Redick made it clear he is going to embrace analytics. The quote he used yesterday was he said, I'm going to use math. So that's a reference, of course, to three is more than two, the analytics war cry. And we just had a young coach, Joe Mazzulla, who is very analytics-focused. Oh, who mm -hmm. just won an NBA title. So mm -hmm. you can't say it's a mistake, per se. Obviously, it requires a blend of just looking at what's in front of you, but I think that that will be a more modern approach that J.J. will use. And, and frankly, whatever happens with J.J. Redick as a coach, what will really matter is the roster, and they need to take a more modernized view of the roster. They need to specifically seek out players who play the way J.J. Redick wants to play meaning they've got to get more shooters, which is, of course, what works around LeBron anyway. Mm -hmm. They have to up their scouting department. They have long had one of the most sparse, understaffed international and national scouting departments. That Rob requires Polinka, funding. That does require, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. but, but, it, but Rob Polinka made a good point in that same set of comments mm -hmm. yesterday. He said, with the way the CBA is changing, the draft and developing your own players is more important than ever because you just can't make those big trades that we've seen in the last, even the last year or two. Those won't be possible anymore. Hmm. So if that's the case, he's got to modernize the scouting department. And I thought it was interesting that J.J. Redick said he wasn't going to necessarily coach Summer League, which, by the way, would probably be pretty useful for him mm -hmm. to do. But he said it's because he intends to be very busy with the free agency process and the draft process. So but he did say he would be involved in the summer league? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. But but he what was interesting to me about that answer is he made it clear he will be involved in that stuff too. So mm. to me this is a more modern approach to the Lakers coaching job. Different I, you know, there's a lot of ways to be different. No, I mean I'm just laughing because you you said a lot and I'm listening to you. <laughs> about what you discovered at the press conference. You're yes. just giving us the information yes. that they was giving us, yes. right? For those of us didn't watch it or see it. In, in modernize and in, in analytics and all that, and I'm sitting here thinking of you, you said Joe Mazzula yeah. in the analytics, and I sat there and said, well, analytics, does that mean that getting a Porzingis, is that, is that analytics? And going to getting a Derek White, is that analytics and Drew Holiday? Mm -hmm. And having a Tatum and having a Brown I don't think that's analytics. Mm -hmm. I they, think that you got did. some hell of a basketball players, yeah. though. But they shot a no, I, I whole get, lot of threes. No, I, I understand that part. Yeah. yeah, I understand that part. But look, in the end, Rob Palinka is doing what he needs to do as a general manager in terms of the press conference, right? All we do in sports is we, we, we look at the history. We look at the history. And history says that a first-time head coach with no coaching experience they don't fare very well. I mean, that's what the history says. We can't run from that, whether it's analytics or not. He can modernize it all he wants. When you look at, first of all, J.J. Redick is the 13th head coach without coaching experience, any coaching experience at all since 1990. So it's not really a whole lot. It's just really not. But then when you look at the, the guys, they average about two and a half years of coaching before they get fired. And you mentioned, yeah. hey, it'd be nice to keep a coach around longer than three years. Well, history shows 
two and a half. And then when you start talking about the playoffs and getting into the playoffs and winning to get to a championship, none has ever done that. Now, if you're telling me the goal, and I would have liked to have heard him say, well, our goal is to develop J.J. to be our coach three, four, five, six, seven years from now, because what you're telling me is you want to win a championship right now. You want to win a championship right now. That has that just never happened with a guy who has no coaching experience. Mm-hmm. Now, you say, well, it could happen. You got two of the top ten players in the NBA. Well, you fired a guy that won a championship, and you fired another guy that took you to a Western Conference, no matter what the path was that they got there. Whatever seating, that doesn't really matter. All I can do is look at the history, and the history suggests to me that this is not going to be all roses in the end. Right. It's just not. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And so, Skip, mm-hmm. I, I like what Polinka said at his press conference, but I'm not fooled. You're not going to fool me. Okay, time out before I proceed. Yes. As a lifelong, demanding, spoiled, rotten Laker fan that you are. Okay, I'll take that. You would be okay if Rob sat up there yesterday and said, we're going to develop J.J., we're going to bring him along slowly for three or four years, yeah, you know and why? we'll compete you in three why? or four you know years. Why? Really? Because that's what you got in the coach. It, you that's, got, that's that what you got. That could be the reality. So Are tell you me okay the reality with... of okay. it. Don't try to lie to me okay. and have me all jumping up and down in my seat. And it's not going to go that way. But you're okay just to sort of... No, I'm not okay, but at least tell me the truth, Skip. Okay, all right. Tell me the truth. Okay, I'll tell you the truth about what Rob said. And I like Rob a lot, and I do think he's done really good things the last two years to improve this roster. And I thought even going into this year, if they'd stayed healthy, I thought they were very competitive with that roster, and they lost too many key pieces who did not contribute the whole year. Now, back to what Rob said. So he says, when we embarked on the search, it was really important for us to see if we could do something a little bit different. So Dave McMenamin reported that right off the bat, their their goals were, let's go get Jason Kidd number one, Ty Lue number two, and J.J. was somewhere in the mix down the list. Well, is Jason Kidd something a little bit different? No, it's, it's something pretty great. It's mm-hmm. proven, right? Is Ty Lue different? No, he's really good at what he does, and you're not going to get him. It was unrealistic to even have those two at the top of your, your wish list, right? And then we go around the horn, and we got James Borrego being interviewed twice, and, and we're doing it with Sam Cassell's in the mix, and then I'm not sure who else of those, those A-list candidates were on there. And finally, all of a sudden, out of bolt out of the blue, it's Dan Hurley, and I still think they got taken for a ride by Dan, but that would have been something a little bit different. I'll, I'll give you that. And yet, the history of college coaches coming to the NBA is not very good, right? No. You, 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 it's no better than the first time. But at least he's coached head coaches. at a high level. Yes, he has. So you, so could, you could sell that you a little could, more. You, you would be far more excited right now with Dan Hurley, which is why you said, break the bank, baby. Just go, it. right? Yeah, whatever. And then you would have broken his bank in Connecticut because he would have gone home with the biggest offer. He, he said, I, they're offering me $18 million. Right. Can you guys you can match? You know? Okay. So if, if you had told me, and I'm going to say this one last time, if, if they had fired Darvin Ham, which I did not think in the beginning they should have done, I thought he had done enough to keep his job. If they had fired him and had J.J. waiting on the back burner and within a day or maybe a couple of days, you introduce J.J. and say, we, we've got something different here. We really believe in J.J. in the way he wants to teach basketball. It's how it's to be taught, said, said Rob. Well, and I'm, now I'm even thinking, well, how would J.J. know how to teach basketball? He's, he's never taught it to anybody except the third, as you pointed out last week, the third and fourth graders. And I guess they were pretty good. But I don't know if that translates to a f- soon-to-be 40-year-old in LeBron James. So the, the, it, it still feels like this was a default position. Well, we couldn't do that, and we couldn't get him, we couldn't get him, and finally we wound up with J.J. And I like J.J. And to your point, you better win that press conference because you were born to win that one, man. Right. You've been training for that one since you were in high school because you were a big star in high school and you talked to the media constantly. When Darvin Ham did his intro press conference, 
I'm kind of on pins and needles for him because he'd never done this before. Not one time had he ever done a press conference that I'm aware of. Maybe he sat in or something. I, I don't know. But, but he didn't do that. And I thought Darvin Ham was great.